Hi, school counselors. So good to see you. Today, we're going to be planning for the new school year. Don't forget to mute your mics. And also, anytime if you have any questions, you can type it in the chat. Let me open up real quick something in here because I need to make sure that I have another window open for the participants and I do not want to hide your beautiful faces. Okay, all of you should be seeing my screen. If you have any questions, please let me know as soon as you can. Over here, we're going to get started. School counseling is planning for the new school year. Some of you may have a couple of questions related to how you can organize yourself, what are the things that you need to do, and so much more. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Crystal Santiago. I'm a school counselor. I have over 15 years in education, of experience in education. I'm a proud Hispanic Latina, original from Puerto Rico, who lives in Houston, Texas. And I started my business with the pandemic COVID-19 in 2020. I have a teacher paid teacher store, called Counseling Solutions by Chris. Also, I have a Counseling Solutions uh, web page you can see over here. And sometimes I wear some of the um, shirts and you will see they're also in Etsy or in my website. Today, we're going to talk about, this was the introduction. We're going to talk about the year at Lance calendar, job interview, resume, possible questions, and so much more. So let's go. Let's dive in. The first thing you need to do if you don't have anything to write with, find your notebook, post it, pencil, pen, open up your notes in your phone, or find a way, either if it's a Google Doc, somewhere where you can take notes of this webinar. This webinar is completely free, and let me know your questions down below in the description of this video. Um, for those of you who are joining us, don't forget to turn off your camera. This is a webinar. It's a free webinar for all the school counselors. And we would like to get started with a quote. It is better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. And that one, that quote is from Les Brown. So by saying that, I mean that your moment starts now, starts today. And in order for you to have a new step in your life, you must be ready for your new beginning and your new opportunity. What are my career goals? Some of you may be asking yourself, like, what are my careers? What should I do now? Where should I move? Should I move to middle school? Should I move to a private practice? Or should I move to high school? Or maybe I should go down to elementary. All of those are possible questions that you may encounter. I'm going to put my glasses on again so I can see a little bit better. Um, okay, so planning for your school. Sometimes we have a couple of ideas or we may have some problems sometimes, like problems. Don't forget that you need to do your needs assessment, research programs, and places nearby. Results from your previous year. There's a typo over there. I will fix it in a little bit. Um, population and review data from previous years or from the previous counselor. When we're talking about the year at glance, we have direct services and indirect services if we're basing our program in the ASCA model. For example, I'm at Texas. So we have a Texas count school counseling model. Oh no, so I follow both of them, like ASCA model, which is American School Counselors Association. The ASCA model suggests a minimum of 80 off time is recommended for direct and indirect student services and 20% or less in program planning and school support. I'm giving you those facts so you can take in consideration what do you need to do in case that you need to organize, plan, or advocate for your program. Okay, so then we have the year at glance. There's some things that you need, you must do every single year. And some of those are like individual planning. You must do your small group counseling. You must do, let me see what else, what else will be here. You must do your guidance lessons. You have to do your foot drive programs, or if it's Backpack Buddy or any type of program that you have in your school district and in your area. Activities for parents or families or faculty, staff, all included. Parent and community engagement activity or trainings. Sometimes don't forget that we also provide trainings for the parents or we hire people who can train our parents. 
based on our needs. Schedules, if you're in middle school or high school, even elementary counselors help out the middle school counselors with the schedules. One-on-one -on -one meetings or personalized counseling. Reward system for students. Don't forget, reward, 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 reward positive behavior. College and career readiness or career exploration. And all your programs should be data-driven. That's very important. Okay, for the year at glance, remember every school district will have different dates, but if we look as an overall, all the things that we need to do in August over here, you will see that you may have made the counselor, you have need to take or get ready for the needs assessment if you didn't do it the year before and reinforce a little bit more the school year that it's, it's um, going on. Um, schedules, that is a big part for middle school and high school, updating schedules or creating schedules. And don't forget that there's going to be always an open house or maybe you have a camp for sixth graders or eighth graders or ninth graders who are coming to your school or they're new. September, usually you have to coordinate a parent event or participate of the open house or both. One-on-one -on -one meetings and personalized counseling where my district is doing this. Um, they started last year. This year we're moving forward with the entire campus. And Sometimes you can do meet the counselor combined with the personal life meetings where you have the opportunity to interview and the student has the opportunity to have a session with you in a one on one setting in your office in a private place and you get to connect and know each other. For October, we have the anti bullying campaign. Um, usually we do it on October, some schools move it for November, depending on what they want. Don't forget that every nine weeks, there's a the grading period cuts. And that's another way where you can collect the data that you need with the nine weeks cycle. Every school district is going to be different don't forget that um for example i start really early in august some of you start like the last week of august so it's going to look different for all of us november kindness month thanksgiving dinners or baskets or any type of event for the families taking care of their needs something you can do it's a gratitude to gratitude sorry wall and a faculty and staff activity usually counselors lead or help with those events. December, December, usually you have your angel tree or toy drive or any type of event for the holidays. I do not want to call it Christmas because that's considered part of a religion. So any type of holiday activity where you can have provide something for the families or you can contact agencies, police officers, um, churches, or anyone who it's willing to help. Usually we do another food ride, rather if it's our staff members um, providing food for the families and combining with toys or, or clothing or gift cards. Sometimes the districts are coordinating at the same time and you can multitask and you can combine families in different programs or spread them out based on their needs. Sometimes they have other programs where they support. Um, and your nine week cycle, don't forget to collect the data for that period, all the guidance lessons you did, all the services you provided and so much more. January, we have the new year's resolutions. Everybody starts setting new goals, including the students, the faculty, the staff, and even us, rather if it's um, lose weight or if it's like control my temper or if we're having any other type of goal like academic goals like passing this course in this class or or do my homework on time stay on task keep a hand my hands and feet to myself any type of goals that will class classified or or be in this area of new year's resolutions it starts the new nine week cycle. It will be in the third quarter right now. Usually you should do a faculty and staff activity. It could be a training or any type of event you may have. Schedules, schedules may change in this time of the year or maybe someone is new and you need to update. February, friendship, random acts of kindness. Transitions to middle school, high school, college. It starts like right away. Some of us start preparing around December to be ready for January and February. But usually, officially, some of the processes, this is going to be kind of nearby the due date. March, mock testing, rather if it's STAR test or any type of testing you have in your district, um, 
behavior. Why did I put behavior? In this time of the year, all of us are tired and also the students. At this time of the year, everyone is so busy, 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 and you may see some type of behaviors arising. Um, we want to prevent. So I'm putting this as a friendly reminder for all of us that you're not alone in this journey. It happens to all of us, but we need to prevent and we need to think ahead what type of activities, events, or what we can do. How can we reward our, our, our students in order to help them out and cope with their emotions? Also, what things can we do for our teachers to help them decompress and help the students? And if they need a break, how we can support them? Or if they need help with phone calls or coordinating meetings for the, with the parents, documenting incidents and more nine week cycle it's ending around this time of the year and usually we celebrate also career week at my campus we have a program embedded where we celebrate different professions every friday some schools have moved it for thursdays for wednesdays for mondays depending but the most important part is should be embedded in your curriculum all year long but some of us dedicate a specific week for career week. After that, we have testing April, May, every year the dates changes, right? So this year we're more around May, but we still testing all this area. This is when our students start getting a little bit overwhelmed with all the testing going on for all the purposes, rather if it's Renaissance, rather if it's start testing, mock star, and all those type of things. So taking consideration, it will be really good for your counseling program that you provide a test anxiety training for the students how to decompress uh, breathing techniques. What should I do if I get really anxious the day of the test? What should I do if I'm bored and I want to talk or I want to do something that is not appropriate during testing time and how we can cope with our emotions? I put again behavior because this three months of the year are very interesting and you're going to be so busy. Hopefully you won't. So pray for it. Pray for your students. Pray about it. Pray around the school um, and do as best as you can and try to multitask as best as you can. Summer school and retention. Both things are happening at this time of the year. We're talking about possible candidates for summer school. Um, possible retentions. And at this time of the year, also, I dedicate a little bit of time to do needs assessment. Needs assessment for the upcoming school year. Um, some things that I would like to plan ahead or plan in advance and get ready for my next school year. Or if you want to participate of any Crest Award, ask out the Ramp Award, you should be ready for it. You can gather all the data you need, compare, contrast your results, what are they looking for, where are the glows and the grows, and evaluate your program. Around May, we have all the graduations, end of the year activities, schedules, planning for the new school year, transitions um, from elementary pre-K to elementary school. I'm saying this because sometimes we have pre-Ks uh, some pre ks from the districts are not in the same building. So that's another transition that sometimes we need to help with um, elementary, middle school, high school, and of course, college. So this is going to be a brief overview. Let me know if you have any questions under the comments down below. Uh, is this is everything that we do? No, but don't forget that I presented before the previous one. It was, let me go back all the things that you do throughout the whole year. And then this one is kind of try to divide it throughout the year. If you are brand new to our counseling journey, I highly suggest, and even if you're not new, this is something that I do. Whenever you're reevaluating your program, you need, maybe you have something in your bucket list that you would like to implement this school year. Maybe you learned something new. Maybe you saw something in social media or maybe another school is doing something that worked well. Maybe you went to a professional development or to a convention and you would, oh, I would, I would like to implement this, but maybe in the middle of the school year is not the best way to do it. So I will wait until next school year. So this is the time that you pause the video if you're watching the video and you take in consideration 10 things that you would like to implement. 
That doesn't mean that you have to, but I want you to brainstorm different ideas for you to select 10 events or activities that you would like to coordinate for the new school year. Two events for the community, school, parents, and students. Two research-based programs. Two events for teachers. Three guidance lessons topics. One incentive program for your students. It's a total of 10. You can do it in this post-it. You can do it electronically. You can categorize your, um, however you want to do it. But take the time to think about 10 things. An incentive program for your students for positive behavior, it's necessary. And then two research-based programs that you would like to implement. For example, right now we're using um, PBIS and we're using CHAMPS. But for example, if your school is a leader in me school, or maybe you have nothing, you don't have any program, maybe it's a STEM school, but you're looking for other options. Think about what programs are working where you can target leadership, positive behavior, reinforcements, and put some systems in place for your school. Um, two events for the community and school. Usually the school coordinates a bunch of events, but you would like to plan ahead with intention and intentionally what things you want to provide for your school. Another thing, um, two events for your teachers. And believe it or not, sometimes this one is the one we're so focused on the students and this that we forget about kind of like the whole picture that we should also help and provide something special for our faculty and staff to make them feel heard and known and loved and, and that we're also there for them. Okay, so the next one, the guidance lessons, this one is really easy for me because we're using the grade eight school skills and then also the teachers will let you know what they need at this time of the year or throughout the year. I need tattling, I need um, um, safe touch, unsafe touch, I need any lesson about friendship. So this one is kind of more easy, but some main topics that you would like to target. Okay, have your plan A, B, C, D, E, just in case and be ready. This is gonna be your time for your planning time. So if you're watching this in actual time, take out all your post-its and start planning for your school year, 10 things that you can do. I'm gonna keep going because I'm recording this session. You can always replay this video and watch it again and you can pause the video and start creating, okay? If I'm going too fast, please let me know in the comments and I will be happy to slow down a little bit. I just don't wanna miss anything and I wanna honor your time. Okay, so we have, hmm, I move it forward, my bad. Okay, so we have over here, what should I bring for the interview? And some of us are thinking, what should I bring? So there's a video over there and there's a link to what you should bring for the Oh my goodness, it's moving. Okay, prepare for your job. Review possible questions. Practice possible questions and responses. Dress up professionally. Arrange your hair, your outfit, your image, your portfolio. Be prepared. Update your resume. Make 10 copies of your packet for your plan panel. Also, pray. If you pray, if you believe in something, I don't mind. Pray or, or th stay positive, even if it's positive affirmations. Practice belly breathing. You're going to be very nervous. It's normal. You're a human. You're not a machine. Bring your own bottle of water and your own water bottle. Bring electronic devices and arrive 10 minutes before the interview. Why I'm saying all these things? Because sometimes we forget about the little details who make us feel more comfortable. Over here, you have some school counselor interview questions. You have part one, part two, part three, and part four. Part five, in case that you want to replay all the things that we are doing. Okay, let me see. Oh, my presentation. I didn't put the timer. I'm not sure why it's going in this timer mode. Give me one second. Hmm. Not sure why she decided to play. There you go. Ah, now it stayed. Perfect. Okay. Let me book. So in another um in another video we were sharing. Oh, so this is one of your questions. How should I 
I look for the stuff. How should I know if it's the right campus or the right school? So make sure that you go to great schools.org, investigate, research, do your research before you go to that interview. Make sure that you know the demographics of the school. Where is it? If it's too far from home, because that's the reality. Sometimes we want the job, but we didn't realize that the school was an hour and a half from your home. Is that the real thing? Is that what you want? Especially how the prices of the gas right now. Or if you're willing to do the sacrifice because this is your first school year counseling year and you want to get the experience and then move on with something else, which it happens to most of us. Sometimes we accept the job um, to get the, the, oh my God, to get the opportunity and, and have experience. And then you move somewhere else where it's a little bit more closer to home. Not necessarily that you don't like the school, but sometimes you want to be closer to home um, for quality life purposes. So it's over here. The link is over here. It's going to tell you the demographics, how um, it's going to tell you how many. Oh, give me one second. It started again with the play mode. Not sure why. There you go. And it's going to tell you the demographics and it's going to tell you the details of it. And over here, we're going to get started with some samples of questions. Even though we have this in the, um, if you click that link, you're going to see it. We have five videos about possible questions, interviews, sample questions, and so much more. So I put it over here, but I'm, I selected the top six over here so you can see them. Okay, so the first question, this is really um trying to stay on time. So I'm going to go a little bit faster. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Some people get stuck in the first question. Just be natural, be spontaneous, and be intentional with the things that you're saying. Describe your um, yourself in the best way you can as a human, as a professional, um, as a mom, as a dad, as a husband, as a wife. It's okay. You're a human being. Describe yourself professionally, your years of experience, characteristics of your personality, and what are your expectations for next school year? What are you looking for? When did you graduate? If you have experience, if you don't, what are your goals? So show that you are determined to get the job. Do having the other one, what do you see as the most effective use of a school counselor's time? This is one of the most common questions. They really want to know if you know what you're doing, what you're talking about, how you're going to use your time. And you don't stay focused in only one thing that you can see the overall of your program. The other one is tell us about a successful, satisfying story, case that you have handled and one that was not successful. What would you have done differently? Tell us about a time you help a student be successful. This is an important one. Um, and give yourself grace. Even though we're looking to help everyone, not necessarily sometimes we can help all the people that we wish you could be honest, but start thinking about those tough cases without breaking confidentiality. Don't say names of the students or anything like that. Just provide the facts of, of um, the situation, how did you handle it? What protocol did you follow? What was the outcome after the sessions or after the intervention? And if it was the expected outcome or if it wasn't, why? Um, and also we always have tons of successful stories. You can share one or you can share more than one. What you did, how you do it, how you did it and explain kind of the process or the protocol and how you were able to identify the needs of the students, if you set up goals, how many sessions you provided, and then what was the outcome out of it. And if you still have a relationship with the student, even though maybe sometimes a year passes and people will remember you, those are good memories. What is your experience? The next question is, what is your experience with parenting programs? What support will your counsel school counseling program offer to parents what instructional services can you provide so when you are thinking about this one I want you to be honest and stay true to yourself and think about the needs of your campus what you can provide for the parents sometimes the students are struggling and the parents are struggling as well so what can we do for them what can we provide and for example this happened to me this year they sent out a, a survey for the parents and one of the questions that they sent, it was about the portrait of a graduate. And the results show that the parents had a lot of questions about the portrait of a graduate. 
I would never expect that that was one of the questions, but it, it showed up that it was a need for my campus. So I, what, I, what do you do also, even for those type of details or those type of things, how can you receive their concerns with a survey, with a Google form, and how you can take care of the needs of the parents? Rather, if it's with parenting classes, parenting programs, responding to their questions, responding to their emails. So take a look at what do they need? how and what you can provide for them. The next question is, how does a school counseling program support the school's acad academy, academic, oh my God, the school's academic mission? What is your counseling educational philosophy? So make sure that you have your vision and your mission clear in case that you have that question in your interview. How would you divide your time between meeting the immediate needs of the students and keeping up with the paperwork? That's a very common one. They want to know how you're going to balance your job, how you're going to balance your the needs of your campus, emergencies, crisis versus getting the reports, the paperwork done, responding to email and all of that. How is your use of your time, time spent to address the needs of all students? How will you effectively plan and manage your time as a school counselor? Don't forget about your calendar. Don't forget about sharing your calendar with your principal, with the AP, with the clerks and everyone so they know what are you doing and where you're doing, that you're not hiding, that you're providing services every single Single minute of your life <laughs> and oh so I wanted to tell you something else about the paperwork remember that the students you cannot take them home and in the paperwork you can take it home even though sometimes you don't want to but it's necessary to get things done how will you assess the school counseling program think about data how you're going to collect the data and this is, was one of the questions that I received from one of you and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. How would you address an irate parent or how would you address a passive or uninvolved parent? Those are primary questions that you should know how to respond and what are the action steps? What are you going to do? If you're going to do home visits, if you're going to call them, if you're going to set up an appointment with them, if you're going to chase them, not just kidding. What are things are you going to do? Okay, if I'm going too fast, just keep me posted and let me know. Um, how do counselors stay organized? This is the last question that I received. They have to juggle many tasks at once. You need systems in place. So when the school year started, you need to figure out what things you can do to stay organized as best as you can. And some of the things that I use is like, of course, I use Google Forms. I use Google Docs. I use calendars, scope and sequence, reminders. Reminders or structure reminders to stay on task. And I put a happy face over here because that's one of the accommodations that we give to the students, rather if they're SPED or 504. And I feel like counselors need structure reminders to stay on task because there's too many things are happening around us. And we're multitasking that it's really hard for us to stay on task and on our calendar. You can plan your whole day but then things happen and you have to be flexible. Flexible should be in that area. And then one day at a time. Why one day at a time? Don't be so hard on yourself. Sometimes we want to do it all and it happens to me all the time, but we can't. Give yourself grace. You're only one. Your love uh, and and. You're doing an amazing job and we're only one. And in, in, if you're more than one in your campus, bless your heart. I'm super excited for you. But if you're a player, person flying solo like me, it's hard. Give yourself grace, okay? It's very important that you use your Google Forms to document and have all the system in place, a calendar set up as best as you can. If you're going to see that student once a week, set up the, the calendar for six sessions once a week and put all the things you need to put in place. Do a scope and sequence, at least kind of for your school year so you can have an overall of what's going on. What were your plans when you started? Remember, throughout the year, there's chaos, right? But if you plan intentionally at the beginning of the school year, it's going to go well. It's going to, it's better, it's better. You will even feel like relaxed. And the last one, it's over here. It's an example of my Google Forms because I mentioned in the previous slide, I mentioned Google Forms. I have a Google Form for everything. Google Form for guidance lessons, a Google Form for how do I keep track 
track of my data on purpose. So name of the student, if I see them, the parent, the student is a teacher, administrator, dyslexic interventionist, 504 coordinator, other, right? The type of services I should have more in here, but I just have those. If it was a phone call, individual, small group, one-on-one, -on -one, and if it's an emergency or other. All the grade levels, remember that I'm in elementary, but you can put all your grade levels. Um, um, topics, you have those and so much more in an area for comments. And remember that you can always in the settings area or in the three dots that like you're gonna see in your Google form, you can always download those things. If you see over here, can you imagine me tallying on a hand, like one by one, 858? There, there's no way, there, there's no way. So thanks to technology who is doing all of that for us. And then you can filter your Excel form and do whatever you need to do. Okay, oh, by the way, yes, I have some of those forms in Teacher Pay Teachers. If you wanna follow us, Counseling Solutions by Chris. If you have any questions, you can leave it down below in the comments. Um, let me know what do you want me to do for the next webinar. And this is, I'm gonna post it as soon as I can. And then my email, Counseling Solutions by Chris, there's gonna be the TPT store, my Twitter account, I have the YouTube channel and you, should know Instagram, Facebook, and all of that. And my personal website will be www.counselingsolutionsbychris.com. So thank you so much for your time. Um, let me know what you need me to create for the next um, webinar and stay tuned. <laughs> Bye.